What's up, everybody? I'm gonna do the RV transport thing. So I wanted to try to document a little bit. Just leaving San Antonio, Texas, where I'm from, heading up to Elkhart, Indiana, and I'm going to orientation next week with Classic Transport. And we're gonna check it out. Just filled up, $3.53 here in San Antonio for diesel at Circle K. And yeah, so gonna try to make it halfway tonight. I think it's uh, somewhere in Arkansas, Marion, Arkansas, near Memphis. So gonna try that. Anyway, wanted to talk a little bit about it because there's not much information. If you don't know somebody doing it or whatever, I mean, there's a lot of information on YouTube, <clears throat> but nobody really documents how much money you make. Nobody really says what's going on, at least not current. You know, I'm, I'm in a different situation where, do I need the money? Yes, but I retired from the military, so I have my military retirement. I wouldn't say that I'm doing it for fun, but I think the reason I'm, I'm interested in doing it is for the freedom of choosing when I wanna to go to work and where I wanna go and what I wanna do. So that's the reason I did it. I retired from the Air Force and I was fortunate to have, to have a friend who owned a local business here and he let me work for him. And I've been there for about a year and a half and I you know, just decided I, I wanted to go back to school. So I'm gonna do that coming up at the end of this month or December, haven't, haven't decided yet. I, you know, we got Christmas coming up and our daughters will be here. So I don't know, but I am gonna go back to school. And so that is the reason for this change. I, I wanted to do something different and I got the GI Bill and I'd be silly not to use it. So I'm gonna use that, but I'm gonna do this in the meantime, because I believe that this job offers a ton of freedom as far as schedule goes. With classic transport, they said I have to do it at least once a month, but even then, they're not, they're not too picky as long as you keep them informed. I don't really know what that means. We're gonna find out. I, I really know nothing about it. I know nothing about any of this. So we're, we're about to find out. My plan with this though, is to document every single penny I spend and all the money that I make. That way, if you want to try to do this, then you can do it. Now, obviously your situation may be different than mine. I, you know, your truck may be different. You may have a truck payment. You may have uh, more higher insurance. You may have whatever, I, I don't know, but as far as my expenses go minus the truck and insurance. I mean, it'll be the same for you as it is for me. So this trip, I am going to Elkhart. I am gonna stay in a hotel in Elkhart for the next couple of days. But I do plan to stay in the truck, truck stops and whatever, which I've never done before. So we're about to find out how that goes. And trust me, I will let everybody know. However, that is a big money savings. I mean, the hotel in Indiana is gonna cost me somewhere around 200 bucks. Actually, I think it's gonna be a little less because they told me that I'm going up there for my orientation on Monday and Tuesday, and then I can leave with a load on Tuesday afternoon. So I booked the hotel for Sunday, Monday, Tuesday night assuming that I would be leaving on Wednesday, but I don't know. I kept the reservation anyway, just cause I, I don't want to, you know, be stuck, but so I may, I may cancel that third night and my hotel be a little cheaper. However, I think even cheap hotels are probably 60 bucks a night, maybe, maybe 80, but there is something to be said about sleeping in a hotel versus sleeping in the back seat of a truck. You know, we can go over my setup and all that stuff, but I really don't know if I have a good setup. I have no idea. I just, I, I saw what other people were doing. I took things that I liked that they, from what they were doing and I did it for myself. So I don't know if what they're doing is right or 
what I'm doing is going to be right, I, I don't know. But that, I guess that's the whole point of this. But really, the point is to just see, is there really money in doing this? Can you really make money? Can you survive? Or is it just a hobby? Because if it's just a hobby, I'm not in it for just a hobby. I don't want to... I'm not saying I don't want to travel, but I don't want to travel by myself. I'd rather have my family with me and traveling. And that may be for some people, too, because it could pay for all your travel. You could see the, the country for sure, but I don't know. The math that I've done, it seems like it can be profitable, but then I get on Facebook and everybody's a hater about don't do it and it's terrible and you're not going to make any money and you'll lose everything and all this stuff and that may be true too. But again, this is my situation and my situation is going to be completely different from everybody else's if you don't need a lot of money to survive, then maybe this is the way to do it. Or maybe I'm gonna get rich, I, I don't know. Anyway, but my ultimate goal with this is to, this job will allow me to go back to school. I can go to school full time. I can still do this and make it work. I think that if I can get to Indiana and I can choose my own loads and I can come back to somewhere around Texas every time. I know that they can't guarantee me San Antonio, but South Texas, Dallas, Louisiana, somewhere somewhere in that vicinity, then I could make it work. Again, the beauty of this is I get to choose what I want to do. I don't have to take whatever. But anyway, where I was going with that is I feel like I can get it done in four, maybe five days each time and I could do that once a month and still be okay. And that would be the same paycheck that I was just currently making. But I only have to work for four or five days instead of the entire month, which would allow me to go to school. And that's what I wanna do. Anyway, all right, well, we're still in San Antonio. Got off to a late start. I got 1,300 miles till I get there. Plan to be there tomorrow, Sunday. Happy Veterans Day to all the veterans out there. Happy birthday to my wife. Happy birthday to the Corps. Yeah, we're gonna make a video. This first one's gonna be a long one. I'm gonna document everything. My trip there, orientation, how much money it's gonna cost me. We'll go over all that. And then my first load. It's gonna be a good time. All right, till the next one. Installment two of the initial trip up to Elkhart, Indiana to pick up these RVs for classic transport to deliver them. So day number two, Sunday morning, we are in Haiti, Missouri, I think. I, I think it's Haiti. Uh, let's see here. I drove 792.5 miles yesterday. I spent $199.81 on 49 and a half gallons of fuel. So that's uh, roughly 16 miles per gallon here in the old truck. This is a uh, Ram Dooley. So not expected to get very good mileage. Slept in the truck stop, slept in the back seat. That was the first time I've ever done that. And man, it was a rough one. It wasn't very good night's sleep, but I did sleep. I would sleep for a couple hours, wake up, sleep for a couple hours. The truck next to me had a, a generator or something. It was running all night long and it would idle up and go really high. And then it would seem like it was going to shut off. It didn't, it never ever shut off, but it would just idle back down. And it was, uh, that's when you could get some sleep. And then that thing would idle back up. Man, it was crazy. So I was uh, gonna get a shower this morning at the truck stop, but I couldn't figure out how without talking to somebody. And the line was really long. So I have the Pilot Flying J app. And I believe that you get shower credits for all the fuel that you use. From what I'm led to believe is you need 50 gallons of fuel in order to get a shower credit. 
<laughs> well, I filled up last night with 49.59 gallons. So I was short by about a half a gallon. Had I known, well, I, I don't know what I would have done because I filled that thing to the top. Anyway, so I, yeah, I'm just riding around dirty today. But I'm headed to Elkhart. I'm staying in a hotel for the next couple of nights at least while I go to this orientation, so no big deal. I'll definitely get a shower there. I'm staying at the Baymont Hotel. It was the cheapest place I could find. And I did it on purpose because just trying to save money and see see what I can make here. I I don't want to spend all of my profits on frivolous stuff. I don't know if I want to talk about like how much money I'm spending on eating and stuff. I, I don't know that that is really, that really matters because I mean, you could bring peanut butter and jelly and not spend anything <laughs> or you could eat out every time and spend it all. I, I really don't know, but just for, uh, just for kicks. I spent $13.79 and I got some lunch yesterday. Crispy, crunchy chicken from a truck stop. It was all right. It was good. My father-in-law has a crispy, crunchy chicken at his house in North Carolina. And I don't know what it was about that. We, we got that one time and we just could not get enough crispy, crunchy chicken. So I saw it. And I made a stop just so I could go get it because I haven't seen it since then. And I, I thought it was going to be real good, but it was okay. And then last night I had uh, Arby's at the truck stop at the Flying J. But they were doing a thing where veterans get a free meal. So I didn't pay for anything. And then this morning I got a banana and I refilled my Dr. Pepper. And they didn't charge me for that either. So... <clears throat> So far, I have spent $199.81 on fuel and $13.79 on crispy, crunchy chicken yesterday. So I'm up to about uh, $110 or so. At the end of the whole video, I'm gonna add it all up and see exactly how much I spent, how many miles I drove, the whole thing. And like I said yesterday, I this whole trip is kind of skewed because it's it's orientation so there's going to be that added cost of being in Indiana for a couple of extra days and uh, you know I don't know I don't really know what to expect from orientation speaking of orientation I, I really don't know what to expect I, I think that they go over the, the electronic logging and all those things, at least I hope they do, because I really have no idea about any of it. And then I think they do an inspection on your truck and make sure that you have everything. So I think I have everything. I I need to get a battery, a 12 volt battery, marine battery for the, for the trailers. And then you gotta have things like road cones, road triangles, flares. You gotta have that mud flap that's in the back. So your tires have to have mud flaps and then you have to have an additional mud flap that is on the bumper that is the full width of the truck. And then they have that just to protect you as a driver so you either put a bunch of rock chips in the trailers. So I get it. And then, uh, let's see, what else do you need? I know I'm forgetting a lot of it. But anyway, I need to get a battery still so I'll get that while I'm there. And I'm hoping that they have a toolbox. I know that they make, uh, low profile toolboxes that can go in between the tailgate and the fifth wheel hitch. And I am looking for one of those because I, I need a place to put everything. Like uh, I have a, an auxiliary tank. It's a 50 gallon tank and it's got a little toolbox on the top, but the toolbox on the top is very shallow. You can't put a lot in it. Uh, so I have, you know, some hand tools and that kind of thing in there and then, but I need a place to put my 
weight distribution hitch the bars and you know just some other stuff it's just floating around in the back of the truck that i would rather have it secured <clears throat> especially if i have a fifth wheel we go out I have a tonneau cover, a roll-up tonneau cover on the back, so really all those do is keep honest people honest, but it hides all that stuff so you don't just see it sitting back there. Anyway, if I have a fifth wheel, that'll be rolled up. All the stuff is just sitting there. Somebody could easily see it and decide that they want it. Not much I can do about it. Uh, yeah, so that's where we're at for today. Slept at the truck stop. It was pretty terrible. I my bed set up. I know I'm jumping all over the place here. I I need to I need to write this stuff down and talk about it in order. And maybe we'll do that starting tomorrow. But anyway, my bed, it's just a twin mattress that I got off of Amazon. Foam mattress that I was able to cut down because it's too long to fit in the back seat. And I built a little frame for it out of two by fours and a piece of plywood. And put it on top of there and I and I wanted to have some space underneath it so I could store stuff clothes whatever and I think I made it too tall because it is very close to the ceiling <laughs> so I have enough room to lay on my side and whatever but you know it's just a situation that I'm not used to I have a bed at home that's a full length that I can stretch out and I can my you know not touch the ceiling like you can in here so I get that there's gonna be some sacrifices I just wish I would have made the legs a little bit shorter and given myself a little more room and maybe in a future video we'll do a, a walk around of that and how I made it what I did with it or maybe I'll cut it down because it's too tall and go from there. So anyways, I got uh, 500 miles left. So I should get there by mid-afternoon, early evening, something like that. And yeah, I'm going to drive by and see if I can find Classic Transport where it's at. And then go check into the hotel and just relax. Try to get some sleep tonight. I got to be there at 8.30 in the morning. I am going to lose an hour going to the East Coast time. I'm currently in Central Time here in Missouri. And so I'm going to lose an hour. But I don't think I lose an hour right till you get into Elkhart. Okay. Well, I'm just rambling at this point. I have no more content <laughs> to provide. So until the next one. For those curious what the Baymont looks like, Elkhart Baymont, they may have different rooms, I don't know, but. A little TV. King bed. in the parking lot. All right, here we are. Elkhart at the Baymont Hotel. Looks like a uh, bunch of other drivers here with the same idea as me. I don't know. Big heavy duty trucks in the parking lot. Got checked into the room. Gonna unload the truck, get the bags, suitcase and stuff. Across the street, we got a Red Lobster. Oh, Texas Roadhouse over there. I don't know if you can see it. And then there's an Olive Garden. So I will be eating at the Olive Garden tonight. Uh, let's see, the truck made it in pretty good shape. No problems. I still need to go to Walmart and figure out a solution for the weight distribution bars that are rolling around in the back. Also, I need to fill up with gas tonight. I don't know that I'd recommend filling up with gas here because gas seems pretty 
pretty expensive. I saw it was about four dollars and fifty cents, four dollars forty-five cents. So if you can avoid it, do it. But <clears throat> I want to fill up just to find out what it costs for me to drive from Texas to here, empty. What are those costs? And then that way I can figure out, you know, the unloaded rate versus how long or how much it's going to cost to be loaded that kind of deal so anyway i'm gonna fill up tonight but time to get settled in shower get some food fill up with gas and that's all i got for tonight orientation in the morning all right so i'm gonna fill up we're at the marathon i like the gas buddy and it was the cheapest at 429 a gallon so that's what we're doing i wanted to go to a pilot because i wanted to get my 50 gallons to get the free shower but i looked it up and the closest one's like 40 minutes Unless I want to pay tolls on some toll road, which I don't, so that's what we're going to do. Okay, so we went uh, from Haiti, Missouri to Elkhart, 529.1 miles. I also drove by where I'll be going for my orientation tomorrow, just so I could find it, then the hotel, and now here. So it'd probably be a few less miles. I don't know. Filling up though, 429. This thing's probably gonna cut off on me. Uh, I don't know. I, I think I got a little bit better fuel economy today than I did yesterday because the speed limit here is slower. So I believe I got a little better mileage. But we're about to find out. I should need about 35 gallons. So we'll see. Hopefully this pump doesn't shut off. But if it does, we'll just redo it. I'll let you know. A grand total, $166.80, 38.799 gallons, which equals 13.6 miles to the gallon. So I was wrong and I got worse today. So I don't, I don't understand. Anyways, we're gonna go get some food and call tonight yeah all right orientation complete all the people were great uh, the ladies in there who are the recruiters and all the people who work there are really cool and the only thing I didn't like was they didn't have any dr. pepper so they gave me a coke I mean come on now gotta have dr. peppers and uh, they gave me a hat so I guess I'm official. They went over all my paperwork today, so day one of orientation was pretty quick. I have to go do a drug screening, so that's gonna be the last part of today. Then they said that tomorrow I go over all the electronic logging and learn how to do that, and then I should be able to leave tomorrow with the first load. Oh, I also have to do a driver test, which I don't know what that consists of. I, I don't know, so we'll find out tomorrow. But they gave me a binder that's got a bunch of paperwork in it that I can review tonight about all the different things. The, they give you a credit card and that's how you pay for all your fuel and mileage and stuff. She kept telling me that they were slow right now, so I guess we'll see. I, you know, I, this, this only makes sense if I can get back to South Texas. I, I, I just can't see how I can make it work if I can't get back to South Texas. It doesn't work if I come here and then go to, she said they have a lot of loads to Ohio. So come here, go to Ohio and then back to Texas. It doesn't, I'd be paying to do this. So it's just not, we'll see. I haven't talked to the dispatchers and it's a completely different section. And the ladies here in the recruiting department don't, don't know what's on the on the lows right now so anyway i'm gonna review this binder tonight and go over some stuff there are a bunch of uh like miscellaneous fees oh i also did my truck inspection today 
and the guy came out, did the truck inspection. I had everything I needed except for the battery, the breakaway battery for the trailer, which I assumed I was just gonna get while I was here at one of the local places. They have a lot of places here that you can get truck accessories, like hitches and batteries and whatever, but Classic Transport actually offers a battery and it's 55 bucks. It's like a, it's a little one too. So it's not a big giant battery that you got hanging out in the back of your truck. So 55 bucks isn't bad. They take it out of your first paycheck. And they also take a lot of other stuff out of your first paycheck too. So that's something to be aware of. I, you have the option for them to do that and they take it out in little portions, you know, 10% every time they're gonna take out for your, well, I don't have it all, so I don't wanna misspeak, but it's your tags, your signs, that kind of thing. You also have to have $2,500 $2, in a deductible for insurance, and they take that out 10% at a time until they get to $2,500. And she said you get that money back if you never use it and you decide to go to a different place so you'll get that back but yeah i don't know so i may just add it all up and bring cash tomorrow and and add that into the expense of how much this is going to cost and how long it takes to pay back they were desperate for multi-haul people so you get a fifteen hundred dollar sign-on bonus if you're a multi-haul person so i mean, have something to look into i know they have those gooseneck trailers that you can put two or three travel trailers on you must have a cdl for that i mean it could be could be something to look into i don't know how much those trailers are i'm sure they're 30k plus but they pay you know three dollars a mile versus that. so it's almost double that's pretty good i mean it take a lot of damn miles to pay off 30k so we'll see i'm gonna get back to you guys here in a little while i'm gonna go over all those different fees and let you know what they are and go from there but right now i gotta go do this drug year analysis at a different place like a local clinic or something and then i'm gonna just chill i gotta be back here tomorrow yeah that's it at the baymont it is day three orientation was today this morning just wanted to go over what you have to pay whoever you work for so they require that you have twenty five hundred dollars in an escrow account <clears throat> which they will deduct ten percent of your pay from each check till they get to twenty five hundred dollars and from what i understand is this is to cover you if there's any damages well not to cover you but they have $2,500 in escrow if you have any damages that they can pull from. You got to pay $75 for your Indiana plates, which they take 5% out of each check. You got to pay $15 for a three ring binder that there's all your paperwork's in. And it has like all the insurance information. It has your logging information, some safety stuff, and then uh, the dispatch numbers. Then you can choose between three different types of decals for your truck. You can get magnetic decals, which go on either side of the truck. Those are $20. You can get metal decal signs that hook inside of your window. Uh, the thing I don't like about those is you can't close your window all the way with them. So you're always gonna have a little gap and you'll hear all that road noise after you're doing thousands of miles. Metal decal signs, 50 bucks, and then vinyl decal signs are $40. And those go permanently on your windows. And they told me that if you go with those, well, you can never take them off. So you're always subject to whatever. You can buy a breakaway battery from them for $55 which is a requirement that you have to have some sort of battery. They just sell theirs for $55. And that's it. Oh, one last thing to note too is they charge you $35 for every load that you take, regardless if it's 10 miles, 100 miles, 1,000 miles, they will take $35 out of your pay, and that is for your prep. And what was explained to me is that somebody, a shuttle person that is here, goes to the manufacturer, picks the trailer up, and then takes it to the lot and 
preps it for you, I guess. So that way you don't have to go to the manufacturer, you just go straight to the lot and pick it up. And they charge $35 for that. So, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I mean, all this stuff I get, the plates, the binder for all your paperwork, the battery, the decals, but that $35 one, I mean, shouldn't that be like a, a company expense? <laughs> I don't, I don't know. So <clears throat> that's it. So I'm gonna go with the magnetic decals and stick them to the doors. The lady told me that some people have problems with them flying off, but I would uh, prefer that, I guess, versus not being able to roll my windows all the way up. Now, I, you could probably take those metal ones because all it looks like is a, a very thin piece of aluminum that they have <clears throat> just bent at the top to make like a J hook. But the bottom part of the J is like a quarter of an inch thick. So it's too thick to go inside the channel of my window on my door. So when I try to put my window up, it just gets stuck. Well, not gets stuck, but it rolls all the way up to the top. And then that J hook part of it won't allow the window, the glass to go in all the way into the window seal. So I suppose you could take that aluminum plate and cut that top, the J part of it off, like the, you know, the hook part, you could cut that part off possibly and then it would fit, but I don't know, not something I wanna deal with today or tomorrow. I'd, I'd rather just stick the magnetic signs on and be on my way to wherever I'm going. So we'll see, tomorrow's a big day. I find out where my first load's going and hopefully it's somewhere good. Hopefully it's somewhere south on I-35 back to Texas, but it probably won't be. Who, uh, who knows? I, I really have no idea. We'll find out tomorrow. So yeah, I'm gonna watch a little TV tonight, get some rest. I gotta be back there tomorrow morning at 8.45 for day number two of orientation and we'll see what that's all about yeah all right so <laughs> i start a lot of the videos out with all right so anyway got done with day two of orientation today was all about the electronic logging or logging for that matter. In about one and a half miles, turn left onto County Road 22. I'm gonna turn her down a little bit. Anyway, so uh, yeah, electronic logging or paper logs is what you can do. And it's uh, there's a lot of rules to it. So you just gotta make sure that you're paying attention and get it done. And I think you'll be okay. There's a lot of, uh, Everybody that was there, there was a few people in the class. A couple of them have been doing it for a while. They're moving over to this new company or whatever. And they all said the hardest part about logbooks is keeping up with them. But the easiest part about logbooks is keeping up with them. So if you just keep up with mile, them. Turn left onto County Road 22. If you just keep up with them, then you won't have a problem. It's when you get behind that you start making mistakes or whatever. So I don't know. So, I, so there's two options. You can use an app that goes on your phone or you can use paper logs. And I think I'm going to try to use the app. I don't know. We'll see. It's all new to me. And then what else did they go over? They went over some safety stuff. I got my electronic card, my credit card. I'm ready to go. I'm headed to dispatch now. It's about 30 minutes away from the corporate office. So we'll find out where my first load's going to go. It's exciting. All right, then. I'll let you know. All right, so here's the first one. <clears throat> it's a uh, about a 5,000 pound travel trailer going to Dexter, Missouri. So it's a little less than 500 miles and it pays $800 for me to take this there. So we will see and make sure that's exactly what I get paid. They 
told me they're gonna pay me half up front, so that's 400 bucks, and then another 400 bucks when I get there, I guess. I, I don't know. We'll find out. Anyways, truck should be able to handle this okay. And yeah, I need to get another hitch pin so I can put my weight distribution bars on, although probably don't really need it on this trailer. And interesting to note, this trailer had a battery already, so I didn't even need a battery for this one. I don't know, I doubt they all do, but some of them come with them. But yeah, this is it. The Vibe 19RB. Pretty cool. I've seen some other people in other videos say to take these things off and throw them in the back of your truck and put them back on when you get there because they just come off. So I might, might do that. Anyways, waiting for the yard guy to get here so I can go on a test drive and see if I got the skills that'll pay these bills. At least 800 of them anyway. Good morning. This is, uh, it's, let's see, what day is today? Today is, uh, Wednesday. So I've been on the road since Saturday. So Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Day five. And I'm here in Charleston, Missouri. Uh, spent the night at a Super 8. Chose to do that instead of the back of the truck. Super 8, uh, let's see, was, should have had all this ready, I don't even know, it's not in my phone, so I think it's about 65 bucks. I am waiting for my 10 hour break to be over so I can, or excuse me, my 10 hour off duty to be over so that I can reset my shift which is uh, about 25 more minutes. So a shift is basically, everything has to add up to 24 hours in the end. So a shift starts and then you can drive or you can be on duty, I should say, for 14 hours. And during that 14 hour period, you can drive for eight, or excuse me, for 11 of those hours, 11 of the 14 you can be driving. And then in the first eight hours of driving, you have to take a 30 minute break. And that's so you can relax, be alert, that kind of thing. So, sitting here at the Super 8, Super 8, waiting my 24 minutes, and then we'll get in the truck and we'll head to Dexter, Missouri, where we're gonna drop off this guy. Forest River vibe. It's a pretty cool little trailer, towed really well. It's called the 19RB. But yeah, the truck pulled it real good. No problems. I may try to head over to this Casey's truck stop, see what they got going on. We'll see. Okay, so we just dropped off the unit right here, and we are gonna head back home. I called dispatch, and they said they had nothing for me, so I'm gonna go back home. I think it's about a 13 hour drive, so probably make it somewhere down the road and then stop. Nah, I don't know yet, we'll see. And then, uh, yeah, it was easy to drop off. Came in, they told me where to park. I parked, guy came out, went back inside, met him with the paperwork. Then I uh, uploaded it, sent it in. That was it. 
I called, confirmed that they got it. They got it. They gonna pay me the rest of the money. So on down the road I go. We'll see how far we get. Currently in Neelyville, Missouri, or Nellyville, Missouri, something like that. I don't know. Almost to the Arkansas state line. I'm headed home. I got 761 miles, about 11 hours, 15 minutes or so to get there. I'm not gonna make it today, probably. So I am going to stop somewhere along the way and get some sleep. But just kind of wanted to recap what has gone down so far. And it's been a lot. I don't know. This trip definitely wasn't worth it. That's for sure. So I got paid just now the amount in full. So as soon as I dropped the trailer off, I uploaded my paperwork. I scanned it in with Adobe Scan app. Then I emailed it in to the dispatch. And then they immediately paid me within minutes. So, total I got paid. I got paid $400 the day I received the load as my half up front, I guess. And then as soon as I dropped the trailer off, I received the other half, $445.47. So I received a total of $845.47 to drive that load to Dexter, Missouri. Uh, so, man, I, you know, I don't, I don't know. I think I'm going to spend about $800 or so just in fuel to get home or to go from home. So let's just recap where we're at so far. I spent about $365 to get there. Then I drove around for two days in Elkhart. So I probably drove around for about 100 miles, getting food and just kind of cruising around, checking out Elkhart, just, you know, being off. So I did that and let's see where we're at here. Okay, so I got there and then I drove from, I drove around Elkhart and then I drove to Gilman, Illinois. And that took me 304 miles to do that, cost me 27 gallons in fuel and I think that's about $118 for that. Then I spent the night last night at a Super 8 and it cost me $68.86. So I know I'm, I'm kind of missing some things here. Like I'm missing the, I don't have it written down how much I paid for the Baymont Hotel in Elkhart. Turn right onto West Main Street. I didn't write that I didn't write that price down but it was about 140 bucks. I slept one night in the truck so that was free. I drove an additional 335 miles from Gilman, Illinois to Dexter, Missouri and that cost me I paid 3.92 a gallon. I got 35 gallons. So it was $137.90 so I got 9.5 miles of the gallon towing that trailer. So so far in fuel I spent see 365 plus another 120 roughly so that's uh, what 485 and then another 140 so 585 so like 625 i guess is where i'm at in fuel yeah so 625 is how much i've spent so far on fuel and i've made 847 dollars so i still got about 200 bucks left but I got a hotel last night for $68.86, and I still have to put another 700 and, well, let's just call it roughly 800 miles to get from that last gas pump to home. So let's do some math real quick. And this is just rough, because I don't know if this, is, this isn't accurate, but I got 800 miles to go. And on the way up here, I was averaging somewhere around 15, uh, so let's just call it 15 and a half. So I'll need another 50 gallons or so. 
and I don't know what gas prices are in San Antonio, but when I left, it was 353. So let's just see. We'll just do 51 times 353. So I'm gonna need to put another 180 bucks in fuel. So all the money that I made, $845, is gone, just basically in fuel. So I'm I'm paying roughly 800 and something bucks in fuel alone to drive from San Antonio to Elkhart, then drive around Elkhart for my orientation for roughly 100 miles, maybe a little more, 120 miles or so. Then from Elkhart to Dexter, Missouri to drop off the trailer, then from Dexter, Missouri back to San Antonio, that's gonna cost me 800 plus dollars just in fuel. So the money I made to drive from San Antonio to Elkhart, pick up that trailer, drop it off in Missouri and back home is not worth it. Matter of fact, it would cost me money because you have, you gotta factor in your oil changes, you gotta factor in your fuel filters, you gotta factor in your tires, all these things that you've got to take into consideration on what this is actually going to cost. On top of the fact that I spent another 150 bucks on the Baymont and then 60, let's just call it 70 bucks last night. So there's $220. So right now I'm down $220 just, just in fuel and accommodation. That doesn't, that has nothing to do with, you know, how many total miles I'm going to do and what, what effect that has on my oil changes and the depreciation on my truck and all this stuff. But reality is that I would never call dispatch and take this load. It, like, that's just reality. I just wouldn't do it. It doesn't make sense. So that wouldn't happen. That, that would not be a load that I would call dispatch and say, hey, can I have that load? Unless I needed to go somewhere in Missouri, I don't know then I could take the extra time and make that pay for my fuel for the whole trip. And, you know, in reality, it took me an extra day, but I made $845 in a day. With that being said, if I could call dispatch and tell them I need to get back to San Antonio or South Texas, anywhere in South Texas, I need to get back. I need this trip to make you know, to, to pay, to be profitable. And they said, Hey, but before you go, or before you do that, can you make a trip to Dexter, Missouri? Well, hell yeah, I can. I can drive from Texas to Elkhart, Indiana, well, Goshen, Indiana, where the yard is, Goshen, Indiana to Dexter, Missouri, make $845 because now that has paid for my fuel for the entire trip. So that one trip, let's just say 400 miles, pays me that much. I can, I can get there in a day and pretty much almost all the way back. So if I could get to Goshen, and you'd have to work out your hours just right to make sure that you're on the clock and all that stuff. Anyway, if I could get there and then leave at eight o'clock in the morning, as soon as they open, I hook up, I'm out and I'm driving to Dexter, Missouri. It's gonna take me six hours or so. I'll get there, I'll drop that thing off, I'll get my 800 bucks, and I'll head straight back to Elkhart and pick up my load for, or, or get there that night, spend the night, get my 10 hours rest that is required for me to start the next day, my next shift, then the next day, I show up at 8 o'clock in the morning and I pick up my South Texas trailer. Well, now that's just profit. I, I can't tell you exactly what it would pay, but, you know, 1,300 miles. Let's just say 1,000 miles to South Texas. Well, it's more than that. It's 1,300 miles. You know, you're looking at a $2,000 plus paycheck. So... Your Dexter, Missouri paid for your fuel. Then your South Texas is just money in the bank. Your fuel's paid for. You did that <clears throat> Dexter, Missouri one basically just for fuel, for expenses. Then your next trip At the next light, is money right. in the bank. Obviously, if you stay in hotels and you do all the things, that's gonna deduct from that second paycheck. 
the money in the bank paycheck. So you've got to, you've got to do it to what makes sense to you. If it makes sense, then do it. If it doesn't, and you want to sleep in your truck and save money and make peanut butter and jelly, then do that. But go in there, then head into Dexter, Missouri, the making eight hundred and forty-five dollars. Well, it sounds cool. It cost me more than that to do that. Therefore, I lost money on this. Not a lot, but I lost a few hundred dollars. Just to become a driver has cost me hundreds of dollars, not including all the equipment, not including a truck, not including whatever. Just to go there, just to show up, just to go to orientation, just to have them inspect my truck cost me hundreds of dollars. I'd say at least at least $300. I paid $150 for the Baymont. I paid $70 for the Super 8, which I didn't have to. So let's just say Baymont, $150. $150 for the Baymont. Then I had to pay them another $160 something dollars for all the stuff that I had to buy, the binder, all the things that we already went over. So there's $300 right there. It cost me $300 to go. And it could have cost me more had they not given me this load. And I was fully aware going up there that I may not get a load. They told me flat out, you're coming up here on your own dollar. We may not give you a load. That's just how it is. And I agreed. So I almost went up there and spent $300 on hotels and whatever stuff they make you buy on top of the $800 in fuel that it would have cost me. Well, I don't think it would have cost me that much because I wouldn't have been pulling a trailer. So I would have probably spent $700 in fuel because I know it cost me $350 to get there. So it's probably the same, $350 to get back so this is tough can i recommend this it's tough <laughs> because i haven't seen the money they told me yesterday once you get there you drop off you upload your paperwork call us we'll verify that we received the paperwork and we'll let you know if we have something else if i would have called today like i just been saying and they would have said hey we got something going right to your hometown san antonio come back pick it up I'd be on my way and then it would be worth it because I'd be able to put $2,000 plus into my bank account. Now, now it would have taken me longer because instead of heading south to Texas right now, I'd be going back to Indiana. And so I would get to Indiana this evening. I would spend the night there and I wouldn't leave till tomorrow morning. And it would take me, I would drive all day tomorrow. Tomorrow is Thursday. And then I would drive all day Friday and I would hope that I could deliver Friday night that I would get there in time to deliver that thing Friday night and if not I don't know if they have delivery on Saturday I haven't done it long enough I don't know so I may be holding on to that camper till Monday which is no big deal if it's going to San Antonio I'll park that thing right in front of my house this truck can sit there I'll deliver it Monday morning that would have made it worth it but there's just no loads they, the, the, the lot was completely empty. I was lucky to get something. The rest of it was just, you know, there was there was a dozen campers out there at most. This huge lot that they had, room for hundreds of campers. There was no more than a dozen, probably less. How many do they get a day? I have no idea. When do they get them? I don't know. How do they get them? I don't know. I have no idea about any of the logistics of that part. All I know is I called. They said they had nothing. And the only way I would have went back is they had something going to Texas. I wasn't gonna go back and take more of these loads. I, I'm just not. This this trip for me was more of a fact-finding uh, fact trip. I wanted to find out how much it was gonna cost me to get there, how much money I was gonna make. I had to go to orientation. I had to do all these things. I had to get into the system. So now the objective is to find loads that make money, that's it. That's, that's, that's how you have to do it. I've got to repay all this stuff that I have invested. Left I've got the, the traffic cones. I've got the road flares. I've got this mud flap that was $400. I got the hitches that was thousands of dollars. So, you know, again, you don't have to do the approach that I did. Maybe you already have some stuff. We have, we have a lot of, of trailer stuff. We have our own camper at home. So you know that's the reason i have a truck so we you know some of the stuff is we already use but if you don't already have a fifth wheel or a travel trailer at home 
you're going to have to buy the hitches. You're going to have to buy a truck. You're going to have to buy all, you know, I didn't already have road cones and road flares and that mud flap, you know, so I mean, all that stuff right there is probably $600. Man, this is an expensive job to get into. It is expensive up front. And right now there is just no guarantee on the back end. And they couldn't tell me enough times about how slow it was and how there was no loads and I came in at the wrong time and all this stuff. I was hoping it would be different and maybe it will change. And I'm going to continue to call and and I, I've got to I've got to at least try to I got to at least try to make my money back <laughs> at least. So we'll see. Now, how about the guy who lives near Goshen, Indiana? If you live within 100 miles or so, you're not bound up by the only way I'm making money is going back to Texas. The only way that that person who lives in Indiana can make money, they can go anywhere. They can do the Dexter, Missouri runs and they can go here and they can go there and they can do all these things because they're always going back home. When they pick their trailer up, they're going back home. They're gonna pick it up, drive to wherever, and then drive right back to Indiana for either another load or going back home. So they are not tied down to only going back to one location like I am. They can go to every location, as far as they wanna go. As much money as they wanna make, they can do it. So if you can stay busy like that, man, I don't know. I So I made it to, you can, you can make it probably, I, if I had to guess, you could probably make it 700 miles in a day. In your 11, in your 14 hours of duty time, in theory, you could probably make it 700 miles. So if you could find trips, find routes that went 350 miles out, God, you, you, I mean, the sky's the limit because you could make, you know, six, $700 on that trip. And then that's six or 700 bucks a day. And then you drive back and you get there the same day. You, you get your 10 hours break and you do it again a day. Now you got to You got to take into consideration fuel. So out of that 350 bucks or at 350 miles, you're probably putting round trip. You're probably doing 50 gallons of fuel. So it's going to cost you 200 bucks in fuel to do that round trip roughly. So out of that six, let's just call it $600, 650 probably. You lose 200, so now you're down to $450. $450, you gotta take into consideration oil changes, tires, depreciation on your truck. Let's just say you keep half of it. $200 a day, 225, 250, something like that a day, just to drive, be in your own truck, make your own hours, the freedom of it. Sign me up, coach, put me in. I'd take $250 a day just to drive, deliver trailers, and come back. I'd do it all day. On top of the fact, if I wanted to go somewhere, hey, can I take a trailer to Vegas? Can I take a trailer to see my parents? Can I take a trailer to wherever? It doesn't matter. I wanna to go to the Riverwalk in San Antonio. Get me a ride out to San Antonio. The key is, how do you make money? How do you make this, make you money? You just gotta pick and choose the right loads. And, and being from South Texas, again, I can't stress it enough. If you're coming from somewhere else, from somewhere else other than Indiana, it's gonna be tough for you. Unless you're willing to come up here and just work for a couple of weeks, just stay on the clock and just do whatever they need and whatever they've got. And then hopefully they can find you one back to South Texas. That might be another option, but it's not an option for me because I don't, I don't want to do it that much. I don't want to live in this truck. I want to go home. I want to go to school. I don't want to truck stop education, although that'd be pretty cool. Okay, well, I got no more content to provide today. We gonna drive. I got a long way to go. I, I doubt I will get there, but maybe. You never know. Last installment of this video here we're gonna go over all the numbers I made it back to Texas long five-day trip and I'm gonna go eat lunch with my wife today don't know where but 
I'm going to pick her up. We're going to go eat lunch. So I wanted to go over the numbers here. Okay, so let's do a recap of the trip. Five days. Day one, started out in San Antonio, and I went to Haiti, Missouri, spent the night in the truck. Day two, Haiti, Missouri to Elkhart, Indiana. Got to Elkhart and then stayed the night in the Baymont. Day three, orientation, and then stayed the night in the Baymont. Day four, orientation. Then I drove to Charleston, Missouri, and stayed the night at a Super 8. Day five, went to Dexter, Missouri, and that is where I dropped off the load, then San Antonio from there. Okay, how much did I spend? Here we go. I drove 2,740.3 miles, which equaled 195.561 gallons of fuel. So I averaged 14 miles to the gallon. This is a uh, Ram 3500. It's got the high output Cummins diesel with the six speed uh, automatic. So grand total on fuel, $792.86 is what I spent on fuel. I spent $100. $43.68 for the Baymont Hotel in Elkhart. I spent $68.86 at the Super 8 in Charleston, Missouri. So I spent a grand total of $212.72 on hotels. Uh, and I'd like to note that the second hotel wasn't necessary. I could have slept in the back of the truck, but I didn't. So I could have saved 68, let's just say, $68.86. I could have saved that, but I but I didn't. Okay, so grand total after everything. I got paid $845.47 to deliver the load from Elkhart to Missouri. $845.47. So I walked away from this weekend, or this week, excuse me, this five-day trip, negative $160.11. Had they not given me the load, this trip would have cost me, at a minimum, $936.54. That includes my fuel and my Baymont hotel stay. Now, it would probably be a little bit cheaper because I wouldn't have been loaded with a trailer, so I would have gotten better fuel mileage, and I wouldn't have had to drive that deep into Missouri, so it's extra miles. So, you know, I probably could have went there and back with the Baymont for, I don't know, 750, 800, something like that. So I probably would have saved, I don't know, $150 in fuel for not having to, to drive into Missouri, pull that camper, all that. However, I am grateful that I got the camper and it only cost me $160 instead of $900. So I got that load, which is great. Okay. so. The big question is, is it worth it? I, I cannot base it off of this one trip. This one trip is a mandatory requirement thing that you have to go, you have to do it. You have to go do your orientation. You have to go get your truck inspected. You have to go do all these things. So it's a requirement that you go do it. From now on, if I go, it's on me. I choose when I go. I decide what loads I take and all that stuff. So, you know, I don't know. I don't know how it, I, I haven't quite figured out how it works though, as far as dispatch, because they told me that they can hold a load for me for up to 48 hours. And it takes me 48 hours to get there almost. If I, you know, if I have to go by the rules of the, of the logging stuff. So, you know, are they going to hold a load for me that goes back to Texas? <laughs> I don't know. When I was there, there was a bunch of people just sitting around waiting for loads. So maybe that's the way to do it. You just say, okay, I'll be back in 10 days. And, and you just go and, and you tow whatever is available and you make some money that way. And hopefully on your load back, you can get something towards your home, your home base. Trip number one, I lost money, at least $160. That's does, that doesn't include all the money that I spent on equipment that doesn't include the almost 3,000 miles that I put on this truck. That's half an oil change. That doesn't include depreciation. It doesn't include, I was gone for five days from my family. It doesn't include all that stuff. So 
not only did I pay $160, I also have not recovered anything for towing equipment. I have not recovered anything for all the safety equipment you gotta have. I did not recover the, the $100 in unladen liability insurance I had to buy for that one trip. It doesn't include any of that stuff. So, ah, this is a tough one. This is a tough one. This is, this may not be a very good way to make money at all. Especially if they can't keep you busy. Especially if they can't guarantee you loads. I mean, there's no way that you could work a full-time job and then be like, hey boss, I need to drive to Indiana, deliver some loads, I'll be back in six or seven days. There's just no way. I don't know, guys. I don't know. We'll find out. I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna keep trying. I'm gonna try to get another load. We'll see what happens. I, I hope that it works out, but I don't know. Okay. Till the next one. I'm gonna call. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna call them today. I've gotta figure out what they want me to do with this this check that I had that I collected from the dealership. I mean I know I have to send it back, but where do I send it to? Do you want me to just put it in the mailbox? Do you want me to drop it in a overnight thing? If so, who's paying for that? Is that me? I don't know. Anyway. Okay. So I'm gonna call them, see if they have a load. If not, I'll call them again tomorrow, see if they have a load. Next week is Thanksgiving, so I don't know. I got some work to do on the truck. I need to make my bed shorter. It's too tall. Just stuff like that. So I'll be busy today getting that done once I go eat lunch with my wife. All right, then. Till the next one. Peace! I'm out of here.